Welcome back to the Golf Industry Show here in San Diego, California. I'm Frank Rossi. This is the GCSA TV live stage here at the trade show brought to you by Lebanon Turf. I'm joined now Curtis Wolford, the golf course superintendent at Cherry Island yep. in Northern California. And Curtis is here to talk about interceding with uh, tee to green varieties, Pure Select. And, and you know, we talked backstage and I, I gave you the interrogation already. It's like, okay, you're going to have to convince me on this deal. Bring it on. Yeah, bring it on. It's so great because I've had very little uh, reports of widespread success with bent grass interceding. But I can tell you, I'm, I'm, it's not that I don't want it to happen because as you'll tell me, I'm pretty sure, why did you want to change from what you were doing in Northern California? Well, we were primarily Poa Greens, and as in, especially in the California Valley, yep. managing Poa Greens are expensive. Uh, high fung fungicides, uh, high inputs. Mm -hmm. So that equals money, and long term, I want to be able to lower my budget with so, yeah. so, but the Poa is providing pretty good playing surface yes. in Northern yes. California, right? Yes. And your water was pretty good, you indicated, right? Yes. Water's pretty good, plentiful, plentiful, not expensive. Not very, not, not expensive at all. Not yeah. expensive at all in yeah. California. It's yes. so great. Okay, so you've got Poa Greens. You are managing a Muni golf course with about how many rounds a year? Uh, we do anywhere from 40 to 45. Over a 12-month period. It's over 365 right. days a year. Right, and of course, we were talking about the amount of rainfall you get, and you're saying, oh, it's so much, and of course, I'm back from where we need Noah's Ark. California's, it's much. It's <laughs> That's a right, a lot for California. <laughs> so you have pole greens in a dry climate. Uh, you'd like to get away from them. Uh, you have to now, because as you indicated, you work for a, a golf management company. Yes. you got to sell this to those people first, yes? Uh, or was that something they were encouraging you I, to do? I, I was more, I had to sell to more of the golfers than I had, did the management company. Okay. Yeah. Because when I hear you say, oh, I think I was doing this to reduce cost, I'm going to be thinking, okay, that's a good part of being in the management business. You have surfaces that are easier to maintain, less inputs to maintain. Yes. Everybody wins. Yes. Well, being in a municipal facility, I'm always looking for ways to cut costs right. in one one segment right. so I can funnel more of that those funds into and, other and places. And just to be clear, we're, we're not talking about, you know, uh, marrying, you know, 55 people sort of operation. We're yeah. talking about how many guys? I have seven people, including myself. Okay, so for seven. A, 120 acres. Okay, and, and so that means to a certain extent you're a working superintendent I am as a well. working superintendent. Atta boy. Okay. So uh, you decide to do this and you implemented it when? Uh, October of uh, 2017. Okay, so uh, I think you got some slides yep. because you'll take us through the process of how you began to introduce the bent grass in. Let's talk through that and then we'll come back and yak about it. So what do you okay, got? So Ready for the slides? Ready for slides. There we go. Okay, so this first one. Uh, we started off using the TriWave 40, which is uh, the Turfco TriWave 40. You can see a demo right down the uh, aisle down there. Uh, great machine, uh, perfect seed depth. Where I see, saw a lot of failure in the past was people seed too deep with, with their bent grass. You, you have no work to do to convince me that TriWave is the best slit seeder yeah. I've ever seen. So, we have had wild success with winter injury yeah. on Poa Greens with that kind of technology. Yes. So first time, I went two directions, a total of uh, half a pound per thousand. Uh, so not much seed. Half not, a pound per thousand as an overseed, it's not much. knowing that not everything's going to make it is not much. Yeah, so this first time was an experiment just to really see how it did. Right. And I was going to try to use this the following, but I made some other kind of different kind of changes in how we did things. Okay. With, I had a better success at okay. it. So here's kind of a picture of the dew. Uh, when we did plan it, Really easy to see in the mornings when the dew because of the upright growth habit. Okay. Which is well, and the seedlings are coming up. The seed, right? seedlings coming up is really, it's really great to go out and see that stuff in okay. the first thing in the yeah. morning. Say yes, and it's, this is it's not growing. uncommon. I mean, you've got a good situation where you put it in the ground, and you're getting germination immediately. The weather's helping us out because it's October. Yes. Temperatures are cool. Right. Uh, we're getting some rain. Yes. So I kind of Mother Nature's helping us and out. And at the same time, they're playing on these surfaces. Same time they're playing. Have you changed the mowing height or fertility or anything? Fertility, no. Uh, I did have no PGRs. No going, PGRs going, when you did this. going into this. Huh. Uh, I didn't put PGRs on it until a month after germination. And that was intentional to prevent germ what? Any kind of regeneration of germination. Okay. And I wanted it, wanted it to be able to get up and get some legs behind it. And so when you, dis so now we're looking at this, this hasn't been treated with the growth regularly. Let's look nope. at the next picture. 
So how much longer is longer is this now? So that is about three weeks after after planting. Okay. You can kind of you barely see some yeah, of the rows up there for two sure. different directions. Yep, three weeks. But again, you know, even when I see this done, it's not uncommon to see these seedlings come on. So I, you no. know, I'm waiting to get to the longer part. Let's see what's next. So, so uh, here's another picture. Uh, this one is uh, a little bit further on where it's the, the next spring. Yeah. Um, you can see it a little bit. It's hard to see a little in that in a little particular bit more. picture, but the next one I want you to show me, I think looks a little bit different. So tell us what we're looking at here. So this is a trick I learned from uh, actually Lou Sharp at Tee to Green, is pick a spot on your golf course that you can go back to every single time, uh, put a white frame down and take a picture and also with these smartphones you could use, change the one side of it to the grayscale, mm -hmm. and it really makes the, the color of the bent grass kind of pop out. Okay. And you could also see the, the percentage of seed heads as well. Okay, so this was taken when? This was taken uh, early on in the process. Okay. Uh, this was taken, I think, spring of uh, 2018. Okay, so right after the, the, the spring after you did it. Yes. All right, now what do we got? So this is another picture of, uh, the same after the tri-wave. Okay. Um, just another, you can see some of the rows up there. Right. And see how it's coming in. Yeah. All so, right, so now you aerified. Now we aerified. So this was where we had the most success. Uh, so day after aerification, uh, normal half inch, uh, half inch yeah. tines, two inches on center. Well, it looks like to me you're creating a seed bed. Yes. Okay. So, so, so those greens are not as fun to play on when no, they don't have those no. holes. So that's what I was getting no, at before, no, right? No players the day after aerification. So we were, yeah. we were dead. So this is messy. It's messy. And more, I, another half a pound of seed? Another half a pound of seed. So this is the third half a pound or yes. the second half a pound? third. Okay. So total of a... Pound and a half. Pound and a half. Not much. I mean, so, you know, when you consider many people seed bent two pounds or, or more, particularly yes. at establishment. And, a lot of times with interseeding, people will put more seed, assuming that not all of it's going to germinate. Very true. So it looks like you've had some success. So what's next now? Oh, okay. So here's kind of a step we did. Uh, start with normal green. Um, this is something we did an exper experiment on our nursery green. Okay. Um, just so I could category yep. and do the steps yep. on, on photo. Yeah. Uh, top dress the green uh, came through in verticut. Yeah. Uh, did the seed, half a pound. Okay. Uh, came through and brushed it with a drag behind TIP right, okay, brush, right. um, which was a little on the aggressive side. Mm -hmm. The times before we had just cut a half a, dra a steel drag mat so off. So you did it in the fall, you yes. did it in the spring, when's this? This was spring. So this was the spring process? Yes, so, this, was, okay. this was the spring process. Of 2018? Yes. All right. So then going through and dragging it with the, T or the TIP brush, okay. uh, which I wouldn't do looking back at it because okay. it was a little bit too aggressive and and why do you why do you think it was too aggressive you saw the, the weight grass bruised up the weight the weight of the, the i weight. mean did you see the grass injured from it uh just with how it closed up the rows for oh. the verticutting yeah. it was a little bit too aggressive oh, okay all right i so wanted the sand to fill in a little bit softer okay. all right well what do you got next uh right. that's another one where you could kind of see where we're at you, the gray photo you can kind of see some of the density increasing and some of the seed heads kind of going away. Okay. All right. Is that it? Uh, so yeah. So it. so that picture. What was that? What is? When was this picture from? That was from uh, this summer. So I mean, how big of a shift do you think's happened in 17 months? I mean, what did you think you started out with? So we started off probably with 70 percent poa. Okay. Maybe higher in some greens. Okay, some and, and now what do you think you are? Uh, now I think we're about 70% bent. We flipped it. And why do you think you were successful? Uh, seed depth. So you like the seeder. The seed depth, right. the seeding process with having the tighter rows right. on the And I know the earlier, earlier you said you waited until it was coming up to um, apply the growth regulators. You want to talk about PGRs for a second? So PGRs, cutlass, primo. Uh, for us, Cutlass has been the game changer. Um, it's weakened the POA enough where the Pure Select, the A1, A4 is right. a really aggressive right. bent grass. Right. It's weakened the POA enough where that bent is kind of overtaken the and, POA. And I think we were talking earlier, there's been a lot of success with people using Cutlass and a lot of, and you know, I was chatting with Mark Mahatty in Northern California recently. Mm -hmm. And he was showing me some trim it versus cutlass plots, and at least up in your climate, now his was a more 
uh, it was a little more inland, but still closer to the coast. He was showing a bigger impact Big on the bent from the yeah. trim. It the, the the bent really takes it on the chin. It looks like from the trim. Of course, that also knocks the snot out of the poa. So and then the cutlass maybe was softer. So you, you know. There have been, you know, I've known Scott Niven back east at Sandwich Club for many years. He was a cutlass yep. interceding guy for a long time. Now, they've redone those greens since, but so it's it's not uncommon. You would say cutlass was a big uh, game changer for you. Cutlass was New a game in changer. California, is that correct? Newer, yes. Newer in California. Yes. So I, past history I had tried trim it, mm -hmm. didn't like the necessarily the effects. I thought it was a little too harsh. On the, well, when you got 70% poa and poa. you're spraying trim it, you know, you're asking for it. It was a really low rate. Okay. <laughs> Zero, yeah, okay. Like two ounces, two ounces okay. per thousand. But still was enough to, to It was you. enough to knock it in the keister. All right. So, so I want, with the cutlass, it's a much softer process. And with that much poa, I want to take yeah, yeah, for a, sure. a cautious approach with yeah, yeah, it. Sure. Because I wasn't able to close down. Right, right, I couldn't right, right. afford to make mistakes. And so, so what is the key moving forward? What's your plan moving forward as we start to wrap it up? Keep on cutlass, uh, be aggressive with fertility to really get that More bent. seed? You're gonna keep this seeding process uh, up? Are you gonna let... I may do it one more time this spring because we only airify once once a year, unfortunately. When you say airify, you only pull cores. Only pull season. cores. How many? But you're making holes regularly, Ye I would assume. Uh, we do more verticutting. Okay, we more do more vertical cutting and top dressing. Th then you do poking holes. Then we do poking holes. So that's less disruption to a certain extent. Yes. Maybe. Is that the plan? Yes. Okay. So um, cutlass you're staying on. Yes. Are Primo. you noticed? Okay. So you think you flipped it? Yes. You could look at it and we could, you know, bicker about whether it's actually different. Mm -hmm. Have you seen a reduction in your fungicide program, your water? Have you started to see those savings that you imagined you set out to do from the beginning? Yes, yeah, so year one, our anthracnose pressure was less uh, on a very hot year. Okay. We had 20 days of 100 degree temperatures. Uh, right. Anthracnose, our snow mold pressure was lower. So one of the reasons why I picked with Pure Select is because it's disease resistance. Okay. Uh, for our area, through the INTEP test, yeah. uh, snow mold pressure, it's very resistant to snow mold, okay, which good. is one of our primary diseases. Yeah, in the uh, microdochium, yes. pink snow mold, right? Yes. So that was one of the major reasons why I went with it, huh. is because it's resistant to that. So, so you did it one year, you've been through another year, and in just one year, you've noticed a shift in your fungicide. What about your water, a hot, dry year? Did you change it, how you watered? Uh, it's taken a little less water, actually. Uh, even with those hot years, or hot, right. the hot year, it's used, I use less water in the greens than I ever have. So there's still 20%, 30% POA in these greens. Yep. Uh, what, you gonna get it to zero, or are you gonna, is that POA adapting to your bent grass management? You know, it may be adapting, POA is very adaptive. Yes, for sure. Um, I'm gonna keep putting my foot on the gas pedal with the cutlass. Okay. Um, I have a nursery green, which I experiment. Sometimes I try to kill it right, to see okay, what it good, can do. That's good, that's good. So on a couple of different turf plots I do, uh, when I go out with the cutlass, I will go out at a single rate, double rate. Oh. There's one spot I even did a four Trip. times oh, rate. Okay. Just to see what it would do. Uh, that plot, there's no POA left. Yeah, that'll work pretty good. Didn't bother the bent grass, though, huh? It didn't bother the yeah, bent very grass. Good. Okay. Well, listen, Curtis, I'm so glad to hear you share your story. It's good for other superintendents to hear about techniques, particularly as we're out here in the West Coast, yep. that they uh, brought you down from Northern California. Do you get down to this part of the state very often? Uh, vacation. You're originally a Northern California yes. folk, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Great. Well, Curtis, thanks. Congratulations. Best of luck with, at Cherry Island. I hope that maybe in a few years you come back and tell us, boy, it really moved all the way over there. Thanks for joining us uh, on you. the live stage. Um, I'm Frank Rossi. This is GCSA TV live at the Golf Industry Show 2019, brought to you by Lebanon Turf here in sunny San Diego, California, and we'll be right back.